Good turnaround Tuesday, everybody. How's everyone doing? Who's stir crazy? Give me a why. Better adjust. Me too, buddy. Could go till June. You know, have you noticed how it's a drip, drip, drip as they get tighter and tighter? Right? Stayed home, then enforcing it. Are you okay, Forex Gal? So it's turnaround Tuesday, and um, my candidate is S&P's. Now, it has a chance to turn good. Blake showed a chart that this could be uh, head and shoulders if we clear this up here. And that would measure up towards, you know, 2,900 or not or so, which is, you know, viable because the wedge is all the way up here. And maybe eventually we work our way up there. I'm just thinking, uh, you know, we just took out last week's high by a little bit. Let me show the weekly. There's your monthly. There's the weekly. Okay, so the high this week at 46 and a half, which took out last week's high of four, uh, 45.90. So less than one handle that took out the high. And the two week off numbers all the way down here at 2300. So who knows, it's early in the week and in this environment, anything can happen. That's be 2300. And the other possibility I'm considering, uh, how many times have you seen formations like this? Okay, yeah. Everyone probably saw that on my screen. It's the last day, guys, to become a member at these prices. Steve wanted me to remind you guys. It's a volatility offer. So this is our version of the VIX, 40% off. And remember, we were talking about the VIX at 14. VIX, VIX, VIX. And back to the S&Ps, how many times have you seen formations where you get a breakout of a channel, of a wedge, and it comes all the way back down to retest it? In this case, uh, we'd be making a new low. Um, this wedge line over the course of the next days can come in ballpark around 2100. And I know Steve's a chimp. Oh, a chump, Ziggy. Okay. Um, a lot of people had 2100 targets. So, you know, you can't completely rule it out, but your first important level is yesterday's low. That's 2457, which is where this moving average comes in, 2454. And of course, this horizontal line at 2400 that held and held and held. And then if you just do a quick arithmetic <coughs> count, uh, say 2400 and 640 is 240, that would give you 160, which is also a retest. So, you know, when you have this kind of sell-off like this, for there to be a retest or, you know, even a higher low or at least some fib retracement of this uh, is possible. And then, then perhaps after that, we get another big rally. But that, this is my choice. 1987 to 2027 okay that's in the ballpark well if you go the weekly a lot of people that stop you know paying attention to the megaphone formation but i do remember a face session saying we were back inside of it and that triggered the formation again and this is coming in under 2000 1973 so close to your number sean all the way down here i don't think i'd be looking for that right now but um that's my call when it comes to the dollar there could be some more left in the dollar 
may be up to here before we get another pullback. And this makes sense with uh, if the S&Ps are pulling back, the dollar gets a bid, and, but the dollar doesn't blow off to new highs. It rallies up to here and then we get another pullback. I've seen counts where you could go up to say 101 and then down to 94 and then have the big blow off in the dollar. So just trade the dollar, okay? Don't just date it. Date your currency pairs. Don't marry them. Okay, so maybe that would take Euro back down here before we get another rally up here to 61.8. Uh, oil's trying to pop. Uh, there is divergence here in the oil, but uh, I can't buy it, especially with uh, if I'm going to be right about here and it continues to erode. So, hello, Shahab. And that's about all I have to say for now. We have a great guest. Uh, it's going to be Peter from MCM right here. Excellent technician. Um, I follow some of his stuff through some of my mentees that follow him and keep me informed with what he's thinking and doing. He's excellent. Stick around for him. <clears throat> he's kind of like a musician of the market. He plays piano with the S&Ps. And with that, let's see what's on Blake's mind this morning. Blake, uh, we're going to be inside till June, it looks like now. Don't you think? Oh, I mean, that's, that's uh, you know, huh? that's, a, that's a minimum estimate, if you ask me. Really, I, June? Oh, yeah, wow. I mean, I, 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 I don't foresee um, us leaving our house for probably the entire summer. Uh, at least, you know, I wow. mean, minus the random, uh, you know, groceries, groceries from here, you know, from time to time, which, you know, I, I had to I actually, I had to make a trip to, um, to, uh, my local Costco yesterday. Uh, hold on real quick. Was it crowded, bro? Uh, yeah. So, um, our governor, <laughs> Yeah, he hasn't had a shutdown in the state, has he? he stay at home yet? No, he issued a stay at home. But if you Hi. read through, if you read through like his declaration, it, nothing changed. All he did was create panic. As soon as he said that you know there's a stay at home as of today, it's actually today at five p.m. Uh -huh. Yeah, today at five p.m. Um, that, uh, but if you read through it, nothing's changed nothing at all. But, um, I was like, crap. So I, I was actually just wrapping up my analysis when I found out on social media that this was happening. And, uh, I, um, my wife had alerted me actually. And so I ran to Costco. I happened to just walk right in. I mean, you know, there was a couple people in front of me. I mean, I, you know, they were, they kind of single file line you in. Yeah. And, and I ran through, grabbed a bunch of stuff and after I paid, I was on my way out and there was a line of maybe 200 people sitting outside. So, oh, okay. Cause they've got the news later. They got the news. Like, you know, I, I literally wrapped up my analysis, pushed it for Forex analytics. So if you, um, you know, got all the, uh, uh, updates yesterday evening, I literally pushed the updates to the platform and then I ran out the door and, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it's mayhem. And I mean, it was, you know, cause he created, he created, um, um, a panic. He created, uh, you know, a, a bunch of panic and then, uh, but like I said, nothing's changed. It's not like stores are going to stay closed or anything like that. Essential businesses are going to stay open. Do you nothing's think they're going to, uh, a few states, uh, like I heard there's a soft martial law in Orange County because it's only the police that are enforcing it. But don't you think they're going to have to call out the National Guard to, to really have a nation, you know, to really shut it down? It seems yeah, like yeah. they're doing it drip, drip, drip. Just do it already. Exactly. Well, here, you know, here's the, here's the issue. I'm, you know, and I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I'll talk a little bit about this and I'll get into the charts. All right. I'll get into okay. the markets. Um, the United States is still behind the curve. For those of you that don't yeah. live here, I b firmly believe it. if you, you talk to, you know, Steve and Stelios, which they'll, they'll, they can tell you. And, you know, you, you gotta, you know, fill out something online. If you're going to go outside, 
Italy does the same thing. You have to carry this piece of paper with you. So if you get stopped by the, you know, by, you know, police enforcement, they can say, all right, you know, do you have your paper or, or do you, you know, you fill out or you fill out something online, you tell, like in, in Greece, you text them yeah. and then they, they give you authorization to go do the things that you need to do in the United States especially even the hard hit areas like New York or, or California or Washington, that we should be implementing something like that. I actually believe we should be implementing that, you know, nationwide, but we're not. And we probably will eventually get there. Unfortunately, it's going to be once it's too late. And um, that's my biggest fear at this point. Um, so that's why, you know, you look at the curve in the United States and why, things are not flattening and probably won't. And it's sad to say, I mean, it is anyway. Um, let's right. talk, let's talk about, let's talk about the charts. So, um, you know, the, the S and I'm, I'm just want to bring up, we have this big inverted head and shoulder pattern and, and as you know, I think you were just talking about it, Dale, if, I'm yeah. not saying, if it, if it breaks out, I mean, we have a big move upside move. Now I don't, think this is happening unless we get a nice solid break above 2700 frankly I mean, we have to break above 2700 in order for that to play out can something like this happen you bet you know uh sorry i didn't mean to yawn on you guys but um uh in order for this to happen we would have to see in my opinion a some sort of uh some sort of Good um, news on this. On the good news uh, on the virus front, like w there is a vaccination that is going to be released to the public, and you know, a few that's months. not happening. So, I I don't think it's going to happen know. either. But know. you know, it, it, the, but this is all technically still possible. So just you know, keep that in mind. I, um, but while we're below the thirty eight percent retracement, I don't expect us to even have a much of a recovery. Even if we do, um, we might get towards the fifty percent retracement, which would be right here right towards these levels you know 27 2800 i think it's it's possible but i'm not counting on it um as of yet now remember what would we, negate the right shoulder blake back under 2466 yes do it? correct back back yeah. below well you know maybe maybe below 2400 I think okay below, yeah 24 is big yeah, probably like below here would negate it thank you so um so now let's talk about the other dynamic that's happening in the market. It is end of month, end of quarter. All right. So let's say you have, um, I'm going to use just a round numbers just to make it real simple. Um, let's say you have, you had a billion dollars worth of stocks, you're a hedge fund, billion dollars worth of stocks. And you had, a, you know, you, 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 your $1 billion dollars, is now worth let's just call it 900 million all right so you you lost 100 million now you have to rebalance your portfolio back into dollars so that's why there's expected dollar demand into the fx market because the the equity market losses were so high that they expect that the dollar demand for end of month is going to be high so if you look at the dollar index the dollar index is pushing up against 100 my opinion is is if we break above 100 we're, we're probably going to squeeze towards 100.60 or 101 in the dollar index so think about that going into the end of the month end of quarter today and a lot of those flows need to be pushed out today because of the, this big rebalancing and it's going to be a big one because there has been so many losses in equities. Also, um, you know, a lot of these pension fund re rebalancing, you, like you, you, you saw in California, uh, I, you might've seen yesterday, California is actually thinking about pushing off some of their rebalancing because, you know, obviously it's so big that they, uh, California tends to be one of the leaders as far as pension, um, funds go. And, and so a lot of other pensions follow their lead. Um, th they expected a huge rebalancing in equities. And that's why this big buying has come through in the last week. I, like I said yesterday, I don't know if we're going to get that huge rebalancing 
today because I think a lot of it has been done over the course of the last couple of days. And uh, as I had mentioned to you guys before, that it was so well known. We, we, we were talking about it early last week. Now that like CNBC is running a big story on it for today. I, I think it's, I think, you know, people are trying to buy into this going into quarter end month end today, trying to get long equities and they're, you know, they're finding themselves going, Oh man, I thought we were supposed to get some big buying and, you know, coming in today, but we, we've been talking about it since last week. And, and, uh, and so I think a lot of those flows have been done, but the, I don't think the dollar portion of it has been done. So that's why you have to be a little careful with the dollar. And that's why you saw some of these spikes in Asian trade. I mean, look at, look at the, uh, look at the Aussie last night. This is the Aussie last night during the, one of the Tokyo fixes, you saw this big move down in the Aussie and it bounced back. Um, soon as that China, that ridiculous China GD or uh, PMI number came out. Um, hilarious, wasn't it? <laughs> what, what Steve? The PMI, the, the use. Yeah. The yeah. It was, of... it was, it was ridiculous. I, guys, I, guys, sorry to interrupt. I'm going to talk about that later. It wasn't okay. actually. I, I won't, I won't, well, let, I won't, I won't, I won't go rain on your parade. So l l hold on real quick. Let me just talk about some of these fixings, but you see like the, like the, the, the dollar yen big spike up from, you know, 108 basically to 108 um, 70. And depending on where the dollar buying comes through, a lot of people expect it to come through a lot of it through the Euro. Um, so the Euro might, you know, make a move down to one Oh nine. Uh, the cable is another culprit that, you know, could trade back. You can see how that a lot of the fixing last night, you could see the pound trade back, you know, you know, down towards, you know, one twenty two fifty maybe, but, the question is, where do they, where does it start from? I mean, you know, we could do one of these, um, you know, today, you know, before, you know, before the, before, you know, the fixing is actually take hold. So just, I, I think if you're selling dollars this morning, you have to be really careful. I personally, like I'm looking at the dollar yen and I actually want to be short the dollar yen, but I don't want to be short yet. And I don't want to be short. I probably will real realistically try to be short tomorrow. What I'm looking for in the dollar yen is I'm looking for a move back up towards like this 109 and a quarter somewhere up here to start looking to be on the short side somewhere around here, the 50% to 618 retracement that. So what I'm hoping is you're going to see this dollar demand come through and the dollar yen spike up to 109.50. And then I'm going to look to sell it somewhere up there. That's, kind of what I'm thinking. Um, because like I said, I, I actually want to be short the dollar yen. I just don't want to do it right at this, you know, very moment in time. I, I, I think the dollar demand today could be something quite spectacular because of how equities have moved over the course of the last, you know, month, you could see some serious dollar buying coming in. And that's why you have to be really careful if you are out there um, selling dollars today. Um, I, I, if you see anything really wild come through the market, you, you, and if, if like, let's say you're a dollar, you know, dollar bear, be a dollar bear. That's fine. But let, let the flows make their way through the market first before you, you know, um, fi find a strategic place to be on the, uh, on the, on the, on the, sh on the short side of the dollar, if that's the way you want to play it. All right. Because trying to establish those positions right now might get you into trouble. Um, maybe not, but I'm just I'm 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 more concerned about you as a trader at home and your safety. You know of of getting hurt in some of these some of these moves. I, I do want to point out a couple of patterns and set up. Uh, if you look at the Aussie dollar, the Aussie dollar is breaking lower out of an ascending wedge. Um, so a break below here around the 60, 60 level, which we're only 20 some odd pips away. I think this, this could, you know, bring some downside with the Aussie, you know, uh, you look at the, the Kiwi, Kiwi's breaking out of a, a wedge as well. So the dollar is kind of already showing you what it wants to do with some of these currencies. You got the U S dollar Canadian, which I'm a little irritated that I didn't buy it last night. I was wanting to buy the dollar Canadian. I was hoping for a dip down to 141. never got it. And it's just kind of grinded higher. 
Um, but you look at the dollar Canadian, I mean, we're, we're, we're nearing the 618. Um, I know a couple of people in our chat room were thinking, you know, Hey, you know, looking to short the dollar Canadian fine. You can try it. This is probably your best risk reward if you wanted to be short here. But the fact is, is if it breaks through here, you, you don't want to be it. And I, I'll tell you, I, I just, I, um, went and got, I went, like I said, I went to Costco yesterday for two reasons. I went, I went with one vehicle, pick up a bunch of food. I went and I filled up my car last night because I had a car without gas. And, I, and I'm like, you know, just in case I, we need to go somewhere, I want to make sure that both vehicles are gassed up. Uh, I paid a dollar or excuse me, two fifteen for premium gas yesterday, which I don't ever, I, you know, I mean, the last time I paid for gas that was that cheap was when crude went from 150 down to 20 uh and uh and skip in oklahoma in our chat room he said that gas prices for regular gas was 95 cents a gallon uh we, we were at a buck 95 last night that is just crazy so with with crude oil uh you know the demand destruction in crude and uh, i know crude's up today but you know, you got to be careful with like the Canadian and the, the, the pesos looking a little, you know, little perky here, the dollar, dollar, uh, dollar max. And, um, you know, just you guys just, I guess the, the point I'm trying to make here is just be really careful in the month and quarter end with these, these moves that we're seeing, just, you know, try to err on the, 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 you know, try not to overexpose yourself and, and, and try to uh, be very careful with the dollar because there could be some, you know, wild dollar moves today, um, in my opinion. Okay. All right. So Steve uh, or Stellius, you were talking about last night. W what were you going to say about last night about those PMIs? Yes, I was going to talk about, I was going to talk about VMIs because when I first saw the number, I'm, I was like, man, that can't be, can't be right. You know, it can't be that uh, they've recovered, et cetera, et cetera. But then I had a chat with one of my friends who used to be, uh, used to work at Goldman Sachs and now works at CSFB. And he goes, it's, it's really a non-event because um, if you think about it, the way it's calculated, it's the, the change compared to the previous month. So all this tells us, because it's very close to 50, if it, was, if it was 50, it means that conditions are exactly the same as last month, which, by the way, was a huge drop. So it's a bit like equities. You know, you have a stock going down 50%. If it goes up 5%, it's nowhere near where it was before. But this is what this, uh, this number is telling us, that it's slightly better than last month, which was a disaster. So it's not that things are back to where they were. It's just that they're slightly better than last month, which, last, last month, which still means they're pretty shitty. Sorry, sorry about the language, but yeah, <clears throat> that's what I was going to say about the number. Huh? So, interesting. I, you know, um, uh, yeah, I, I looked at those numbers and I'm like, how is it possible that they registered a PMI at whatever it was, sixty? Uh, 50, Fifty-two. That was my my impression immediately as well. I'm like, no, no way are they back to normal. Well, they're not. They're just slightly better than last month. Okay. Because some, it's a month-on-month -month comparison, this index. Got it. Okay. Well, uh, anyway. Um, all right. Well, that makes a little bit more sense, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go with your <laughs> argument. Um, so, uh, so Steve, uh, how you doing this morning? Uh, good. A little bit tired, but good. Yeah. Well, is, I, I, you know, it's funny how all these days just kind of um, blur into one another don't they yeah very true yeah i mean um we i was talking to you know via text to some of my neighbors and we we're like we we're like you know it's like you you wake up every morning and you're like it's like groundhog day in a sense um because you know you can't really you know decipher the difference between uh you know the weekends and the the normal days other than for us it's like the fx market stops and which is a good thing actually i think <laughs> for most of us just <laughs> yeah Blake, yeah I mean, Blake, I've, arranged, break. I've arranged that you don't have to pay your mortgage this month oh wow that'd be really nice uh they're letting people um have a pass aren't they i don't know i i i, I have no idea and don't we get our twelve hundred dollars uh in three weeks that we could i think certain spend people will in qualify. So, what, so, yeah. certain people will qualify for it i will not qualify. oh for it so yeah um but you know i remember when uh uh we had president bush in office uh during the you know um 
2008, I, I got a check where everybody got a check. Uh, this time, I'm not going to be getting anything, but you know, I didn't get a check back then. Whatever. Um, so, so anyway, uh, well, guys, I want to I want to state this: <laughs> if today is our last day of, because uh, it's the last day of the month, last day of the quarter, we were going we extended um, the volatility offer until today. So, um, if you guys want to be part of the Forex Analytics community this is the time to do it because we, we enacted this um, because of the extreme volatility we've seen this month. And it's, you know, I I've had like, there's this new trader. There's a bunch of new traders actually in our chat room right now. And here I'll, I'll, I'll show you our chat room. You can just so you guys can see it. Um, and the, uh, there's a, there's a new trader in here, Lake life um, who had said yesterday, this has been the best thing that's, you know, I've found, you know, because we just talk about the markets. It's not, you know, there's no talking about politics or religion or, you know, um, you know, we no nobody's, nobody can sell a product. We don't allow that. We'll kick you out immediately. The uh, Pope for president. We, we don't, you know, we don't, uh, we don't, mess around so it's just you know the, i mean they're, they're we joke around you know people will joke around especially when nothing's happening but we don't bend on the rules as far as you know um you know no talking about politics well every once in a while unless it's greek politics we can throw that in there um, yeah nobody can no, no, no one has a problem with that. um but we we try to keep the political noise down to a minimum no religious talk no you know nobody can sell products in there no one can talk about any products uh just it's just charts and markets and what we're seeing and um and that's really the um the 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 gist of our community and so not on on top of that community you got a mobile app you get the analysis that uh you know that um you know comes with uh the our product all the tools that we have from your risk management calculator to integrated twitter to you know um all you know the live stream um you know updates and you know all of our analysis um whether you're talking about harmonic or elliott wave or basic technical analysis um so take advantage of it and also while you're at it make sure you visit forest park fx they are our webinar sponsor they're the reason why we can uh, continue to offer this free webinar and if you want to be part of the reimbursement program you can contact them uh, their uh, skype and email address is right here um, so you can contact them directly uh, and i want to thank you for those of you that are supporting uh, forex analytics i want to thank you and for those of you that are like man i can't do it right now uh, but i plan to do it in the future you know i appreciate that and we all do and and hope to see you part of this community um, soon. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to pass it over to my colleagues, Steve and Stelio. So I got to get to the markets. Uh, all right, guys, have a great one. And thanks coach. Hey, buddy. Um, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Stelios. Thank Blake, you, I have something to show Love you before to. you go. Okay. This is a gas receipt in Greece. That's the amount you pay. That's how much, much the gas costs and that's how much taxes are. Oh my God! Yeah, can you believe it? Twice as much. Because That's... no matter how low gas goes, the vast majority of the expenses taxes, which unfortunately they were smart enough, or you know, harsh enough with us, the vast majority of the taxes on gas are not on the price itself, which means that obviously you know they would go down as the price of gas goes down. They are based on. The liter. The liter. Yeah, that yes. Is, yeah. So no matter how low, I mean, even if they start giving out gas for zero, You'd we still will still be tax. paying multiple times what you guys in the U.S. pay for gas. Nuts. Amazing. I guess that's the reason why you guys don't have uh, six and eight cylinder cars there. Yeah. Gas very business. true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very true. I'm not paying much for gas lately. How about you, yeah, Blake? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not driving, driving. anywhere. Yeah, I'm not even with me. I'm I'm yeah. walk, I'm biking everywhere. Yeah. All right, guys. All right, so, buddy. Canadian GDP. 
Let's yeah, have a look I already it. brought it up, Stelio. Uh, so we'll uh, wait for the data and then. This is uh, January numbers, uh, January uh, print, though. So yeah, it's it's backward it's looking, really so it's 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 not going to do anything. Yeah, uh, but regardless, since yeah, so in, in I mean, line, yeah. Producer price is lower, um, GDP as expected, but you know, very backward looking. So I doubt that USD card. Let's have a fast look. I doubt that USD card is doing much. Having said that. The general formation I see here in USD card looks corrective to me, given the fact that, you know, we've had like a vertical move higher uh, after breaking through this uh, long-term triangle. I think it's very, very likely that USD card is going to be trading uh, higher in the days, weeks ahead. So I, I do uh, maintain a bullish bias here. So still, what else did we have? Um, Yes. Overnight or tomorrow morning or, or today morning. That, tomorrow uh, morning we have. Yeah, tomorrow uh, morning. <laughs> can, can you please guess? <laughs> <laughs> Apart yeah. from the Chinese, Chinese numbers, uh, we had um, a couple of statements from the Kremlin about um, that there is an understanding between Russia and the US that the current oil market situation is not in the interest of both countries. Uh, but then they said that there, there should be consultation on the oil market, but no date has been agreed. So. You know, I've been saying this for a few days now, oil down here suits nobody except perhaps the Saudis. The um, Saudis, yeah, because they're going to run a lot, uh, biz a lot of businesses worldwide out yes. of this market and then they can, yeah, they can have a yeah. bigger share. And, and although the Russians are saying they have plenty of reserves to last them for years with oil prices here, I, I, I don't think they really want to waste that this way. And remember, the Russians were the ones that dissented on the further production cuts from OPEC. <clears throat> so at some point, my, my belief still remains that, I don't know when it's going to be, but it's not going to be too far away from now. Uh, the Russians and OPEC and the Americans maybe, I mean, they're all going to get together and uh, form a bigger cartel, basically, and control production. So um, that's yeah, what... Yeah, it's, um, it's very likely. But yeah, I mean, we've said it many times. The downside in crude from here is limited. Now, nobody yes. can be certain how limited limited is. Uh, but even if a potential price drop can end up being rather big in percentage terms, because, I mean, we're trading at 20, roughly. So even if it goes like briefly to, you know, 13, that's, for example, is a huge percentage <coughs> drop. But so yes. when I say limited, uh, I mean in price, but I mostly mean in time. So, you know, I don't care how low we can go, but I think it's going to be for a very short period of time. Yes. So uh, in other news, um... Obviously, coronavirus is still dominating headlines. The rate, the rate of infections in Europe seems to be topping out. Obviously, it's a bit early to say, but uh, uh, it seems to be on uh, on like a plateau. So hopefully, this translates to a um, to a to a move uh, closer to what uh, China saw. So basically, you know, two yeah. months of the high, weather higher is also going to help. The question it is, is what happens. Help, yeah. The question is what happens following summertime. I mean, you know, do we get a repeat and perhaps even, you know, uh, worse than what we currently had? So, you know, back in isolation, in social distancing, etc. Uh, and, you know, I'm saying that not only from the human perspective, which is obvious, but, you know, undoubtedly we're talking about, you know, uh, extreme damage inflicted to yeah we're economy, talking right? about yes. a depression if we have to shut it down for a second time absolutely no question yes about yes, yes yes and actually it's funny you should mention that because goldman sachs uh they revised the forecast for q2 u.s growth to what is uh annualized minus 34 percent and i saw that and i was thinking wow finally somebody who actually yeah kind of puts like a right number to it. A number that uh, makes, makes makes sense instead of BS, but, yeah. But I remind go, you that But then they go, they, ago, go, they go in and ruin it all by saying that the Q3 should be a big uh, bounce back. And I'm like, you know what? So, <laughs> and to be honest, even if it's a big bounce, how can they be optimistic about it with the data we currently have? You know what I mean? I mean, it might be, seems unlikely, uh, but I mean, based on what data? I mean, with what we currently know, you have no reason to believe that. 
they, they are extrapolating with the effects of you know SARS and similar um, outbreaks, which have nothing to do with this one. So yeah, but I don't remember yeah. us locking down whole countries when of we course. had SARS. So how can they extrapolate based on that? I agree. I agree. I saw a chart this morning. I think I did. I post it on the chat room. I can't remember uh, the um, hotel occupancy rates in Macau, and uh, <laughs> that was usually like ninety percent, and it's dropped down to ten or twelve. Some of that is just just disaster for for the yeah. whole the whole sector, basically. So anyway. many sectors. Yeah, well, every I sector, remind you, really. by the way, since we were talking about the prediction uh, having to do with Q two, US GDP. I remind you that. It's roughly 15 days ago. It might, it might not even be 15 days ago. Mnuchin was saying that the U.S. can uh, will actually escape going into a recession, which I mean, <laughs> yeah, like, insane, insane. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's one it's one thing to try and say something that keeps morale high and though it doesn't you know cause yeah, but, people to panic, uh, but that's like yeah. completely wrong, completely out of. Uh, I mean, there is no reality. upside to that because you either look completely worthless or really stupid because if you're if you're about to lie about something that even people that are completely ignorant having to do with eco with an economy can you know understand that it's going to happen i mean what kind of a benefit does does that yeah well, give? i mean you can say that you can say in advance like yeah i mean we're going to technically go into a recession because of you know this unexpected like lockdown and um, effect of the disease, but don't worry about it because it's it's only going to be temporary and just you know due to the effects of of the virus, for example. I mean, don't say something like we're, we're go not going to go into a recession. Yeah. I mean, this is like you know it's not even a joke. Yeah. Anyhow, let's so see how this is going to. Um, yeah. Otherwise, we didn't have anything else. Clearly, we're waiting for numbers which are not backward looking. So uh, really, uh, jobless claims again out of the US this week and payrolls we have as well but uh, jobless claims is the real it's become the big number now which is uh, yeah very previous print 3.3 million yeah. I mean was uh, unbelievable and uh, it is likely that we're going to see unfortunately and equally or even worse I mean there's you know there are many sources from what I've seen that say that they expect perhaps even a worse number this week than why don't we extend our volatility offer until the VIX is either a hundred or twenty. <laughs> what do you think, uh, guys? Huh? Think it'd be uh, out there for a while? It's going to be uh, out the there. For a you while, think the yeah. hundred would come before the twenty? I don't can't know. be can't be sure uh, about yeah, it. I would yeah. I would tell you certainly if we didn't already have central banks literally having thrown you know. N trillions, uh, and bombs. trillions and trillions and yeah. I mean, yeah, nukes, uh, nukes. Yeah. So yeah, if they let it balance on its own, yeah, we would well, probably see hundred, that. Hundred, yeah. Okay, well, just thought I'd make a suggestion. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Dale. You All either right. you, you either take advantage of the I, offer today, yeah. or we can't accommodate See, you. See, uh, you know what? So this, this is, the, this is uh, your last chance. Yeah, this is the only place I've gotten to play the good cop. All right. So <laughs> anyway, go ahead, bad cop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So having to do with the charts and the technical charts. developments, I started today in the uh, you know I, I okay i'll disclose something we're working on a very nice event uh that's going to be up in a month from now so i was currently working on that uh i mean an event with really 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 top-notch um uh, guests and you know we're going to let you know once everything is in place um we're going to have a two-day event at the end of april um uh, but, you know, I went in the chat room to say the following thing, which, in essence, Blake validated with what he said afterwards. Uh, I said that, you know, it, it looks to me like the dollar wants to move higher from here. And especially if we see uh, risk turn lower, uh, you know, we should definitely see the dollar accelerate higher from here. And, you know, the technical evidence for that, that we might be about to see the dollar strengthen from here, is I was looking, for example, at the Kiwi. So here is the Kiwi's rebound. So far, it looks like a nice pennant. Of course, you know, as always, 
uh, what I keep saying again and again is, you know, and a single four hour candlestick doesn't mean much, right? I mean, I would, I would want to see how we close the day. This is the Aussie. You can see that it's flirting with breaking down from a formation that so far also looks corrective to me. Here is the Euro on the four hour chart, all of them, right? So here's the Euro attempting to break below this um, ascending channel. So bottom line, you know, I see uh, decent evidence that the dollar might be uh, about to turn higher. And if we have a look at the daily DXY index, there it is, uh, you'll see that, um, you know, we almost tested earlier today, we were a little bit higher this descending channels uh, trend line uh, resistance. And, you know, if we break above it, and in essence, if we break above 100, I think that uh, we're going to move um, higher from there. So 100 should be resistance from this point on. As I said, I'm also looking at this descending channel. But, you know, looking around at the vast majority of the charts, it looks like, you know, this dollar sell-off might be about to end here. Uh, now, I, I need to keep repeating myself. I'm not a dollar bull, right? I'm very, very bearish the dollar. But I, think, I still think that in the short term, within the next few days or even a few weeks, uh, uh, you know, the dollar might keep uh, doing well. Okay. Now, I think the big money will be made being short the dollar later on. So I'm just, you know, telling you what I'm seeing on the chart. I do not intend in general to buy the dollar or uh, chase the dollar higher, you know, in any way. Um, the dollar pair that still holds quite nicely, admittedly, is the pound. Because if you have a look at the pound, it doesn't look like anything in comparison to what we saw with the Aussie, the Kiwi, the Euro. In essence, this looks to me like another little consolidation. So I would have to say that probably the cable, even if it needs to move lower, it probably wants to do it from a little bit higher from here. Okay. So, uh, the implications for that, I mean, for the technical picture we see uh, in those pairs that I just mentioned is, first of all, if we go to the Euro pound, the Euro pound remains under pressure. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we see that, you know, this is not the technical formation that we should be looking for, but probably something like this, which would imply more Euro pound weakness, at least towards the 61.8 before higher. Uh, but also, if you have a look at the pound Aussie and the pound Kiwi, here they are on the four hour chart. So I see a triangle here in the pound Aussie. We're testing the 61.8 of that last move lower, but I have to say that it looks to me like it wants to keep moving higher. And here's the pound Kiwi that has already made the move. I mean, this, this reversal lower when we had that huge spike higher initially looked like it might have been ex an exhaustive uh, move higher, uh, but the follow through was clearly corrective. I mean, you know, you don't have to be like any kind of technical guru to see that this price action, which was very, very choppy and very overlapping, uh, you know, was clearly corrective. Now, we've since broken through this triangle um, and it looks to me like there is more upside here. So pound dozy, pound kiwi, uh, you know, look good uh, for more upside. And keep in mind that if we go to risk of conditions once again, which I still consider extremely likely, here is the DAX, for example, that is consolidating below the 38.2. Here is the S&P, which is also consolidating after testing a couple of times the 38.2. Uh, keep in mind that if risk goes off again, which is very likely, pound Aussie and pound Kiwi are the type of pairs that should benefit. Uh, we know that, you know, usually Euro Aussie, Euro um, Kiwi, 
pound Doji, pound Kiwi, they tend to do well uh, when we are in risk of environments because, you know, the Aussie and the Kiwi sell off more than the Euro and the pound do. Um, especially, usually the Euro. I mean, since, since the Eurozone has had uh, zero and negative rates, Euro has been used quite a lot, um, you know, for carry trades. And, you know, those are the first ones that unwind, um, uh, you know, when risk sours. So they should do well, but especially, as I said, pound Aussie and pound Kiwi, um, you know, they look very nice at the moment. Now, let me go through some of your questions because the last couple of days we didn't have time to cover many, so I don't want today as well not to. Uh, technical view on Dozi and Kiwi. Oh, uh, okay, we just did this. Uh, as I told you so far, this rebound looks corrective to me, and I, I consider it very likely that if we close below you know, the equivalent pennants, uh, we're going to see more weakness uh, coming through the market. Also, how do you see USD Swiss? In this environment, yeah, absolutely. USD Swiss uh, remains quite nicely inversely correlated to the Euro USD, as we know. Uh, actually, let me go to the daily chart for this. Um, Euro Swiss has somewhat stabilized, although admittedly it has stabilized near the lows. So, as long as the Euro Swiss more or less remains stable, you should expect the USD Swiss to do more or less the exact opposite of what the Euro USD does, which means that if there is indeed more weakness to come from the Euro USD, which seems like it wants to break through that ascending channel, you should expect a higher high here in the USD Swiss, meaning we found we found resistance at this uh, resistance area and 61.8. Actually, we briefly went above the 61.8. If we found a low here, which uh, you know Euro USD shows hints that that might have been the case. I wouldn't be surprised to see a higher high from there, at least one higher high from there before uh, we can look for lower prices. Okay, so um, that's what I think about the USD Swiss. Uh, I'm sure those against the USD. It looks like a decent position at the moment. Uh, I want to wait to see how we close the day to feel even, even more comfortable about that. Uh, given this month and volumes and potential for large movements overnight, what is good level? As I said, this is an area that probably you should um, look for confirmation of if the Aussie is about to continue lower. We had that pennant that I showed, so uh, I think that technical formation should be your confirmation. Uh, question about Nifty and the USDINR. I'm going to cover them in a while. Um, I know you asked for them yesterday as well, but I didn't have the time, so I will cover them today. Uh, question about silver. Now, um, the silver is still in corrective mode, question mark. Yeah, I mean, might be the case. I, I wouldn't rule out another leg lower before we actually uh, see a big move higher because I expect, uh, you know, silver to do very, very well in the months ahead. Uh, but I wouldn't rule out a, uh, another move lower first. Now, um, even if we are to move lower, I have no reason to believe that we can't first move even higher before we do that. So I'm monitoring this ascending channel. You can see it here. If we find support in this ascending channel, we might see another leg to the upside towards the 61.8, uh, which comes at $16 and then lower. Um, so, you know, this is, this is the channel and this is the trend line you should be looking for. Uh, more evidence. My medium to long term thesis remains bullish, so I don't want to be shorting uh, silver just because it might move lower. But as I said, it's not unlikely to see if we see another leg lower in stocks, which is likely, we might see more liquidation coming through in, in gold and silver. I will consider that an amazing buying opportunity. Um, now, gold. Uh, still looking quite well, uh, has tested multiple times this 1585, 1590 area, still holding. I wouldn't be surprised to see even more highs from there. Um, now, as I said, if risk goes off and we see a big sell off in the markets, we might see some type of a liquidation. Although, as I've told you, 
uh, the whole situation with what happens in the physical market tells me that it's extremely dangerous being short any of the medals because the chances that you're going to wake up one day and find gold and silver being 20% lower are near zero, in my opinion. Nothing is a zero, of course, in the market, but near zero. But the chances that you're going to wake up one day and find gold and silver 20% higher, they're decent. I mean, it's a 5 10% chance of something like that happening. So, you know, compare what in my mind is near zero with what is like 5 10%. And you understand why I never want to go to sleep being short gold or silver. So in my opinion, this is a market I want to trade only in one direction. And that's up. Okay. Just to let you know, I'm here. Okay, uh, that, that's probably your guest, uh, Dale, Peter. Peter Campbell is your guest, right? I'm assuming. Uh, the interview starts in 10 uh, minutes, Peter. Uh, Steve, what's your thoughts on CAD yen? Uh, yeah, let's have a look at it. Euro Aussie, gold, silver, oil. Now, having to do with oil, I'll go through all the questions, guys. Don't worry about it. Now, having to do with oil, it's attempting to stabilize in this 20 level area. Yesterday, it spiked down to 19. So we actually got my uh, prediction fulfilled. I was expecting uh teams since some time ago and we saw teams now is it enough no idea i can tell you that even if we see lower prices it's going to be very very temporary so i think that you know the next big move in in crude is likely to be higher uh i'm also monitoring this descending channel we're flirting with its resistance i wouldn't be surprised to see a big rebound from here i mean even if it's corrective we can easily see a squeeze, even if there is more downside, it, there can easily be a squeeze down, uh, um, uh, sorry, up towards 26 before we can see more weakness. So as I said, more or less about gold and silver, I wouldn't go to sleep being short crude. No way, no way. Okay, so in my opinion, chasing crude lower, I'm not saying you can't make money, you can, but I think that the risk you're taking is extremely, extremely asymmetrical. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. uh, going through questions to see if we, you know, if there are things we haven't covered. Uh, CAD yen, yeah, okay. Uh, we can cover CAD yen now since it's also somewhat correlated with this. So, this is the CAD yen, and as you notice here, the CAD yen is in essence trapped in this range, right? So, we have a range between like 7386, let's say 74 to make it round, and 7850, okay? Uh, against 7850, and I drew that several days ago, um, last week actually against this is a pivot area in essence okay so against 7850 makes sense to want to be short uh now if we go down again towards 74 obviously the risk reward is not going to be in favor of being short breaking through 74 definitely uh, opens up a lot more downside then we will have to in essence fib extend this rebound and you know, even if you look at this as a rectangle, we now know that it has a range of roughly, let's say, 450 pips, which means that a break below 7386 will more or less point to 69 and a half, roughly, let's say. Okay, so um, that's what I think about it. We're currently in the middle of this range, as you see. So, you know, me telling you be short or be long exactly in the middle of this rectangle. I think there is no risk reward for you to be either short or long here. I do favor the downside. So if I had to pick a side, I would definitely pick lower. Uh, but, you know, no risk reward at the moment, as I said. Diamond bottom uh, in what pair, uh, Sean? Are you talking about the CAD yen that I'm currently looking at or something else? can prove to be something like that, but if you're talking about the CAD yen, but uh, evidence is 
Yeah, you know, we need more evidence to for me to tell you that. And I think the safest formation you can follow at the moment, as I said, is this rectangle. And it is official, it, it is, you know, from theory, it is a rectangle at the moment because we've had at least two tests of support, at least two tests of resistance. So this is 100%, uh, you know, from a technical uh, perspective, a rectangle, okay? So we should treat it as, a, as such. Um, we also had a question, uh, so I don't forget, about the USD INR, and, you know, I can actually take advantage of that and show some of the exotics. So USD INR, as we said before, uh, still higher prices, very likely. Um, now, we can see an extension of this, you know, corrective move lower, but I would assume that it's not going to be easy for that to extend lower than 72 before we see higher prices, okay? So, you know, the closer we go to 72, the better the risk reward for higher. And now having to do with the Nifty that you asked about, um, Nifty is so far showing just a corrective rebound. I think it's incomplete for the time being. We might need to see another leg higher, but in any case, I don't think it's gonna be easy for Nifty to going above, let's say 9,700. We might still even, closer to that for example the 38.2 is at 9400 uh, i would be looking for a failure and another leg lower you know anywhere between there 9 9400 and 9700 uh, um so there are lots of conspiracy theories out there about the virus has anyone anticipated an eclipse of the dollar index? Uh, Glenn, I've said many times that I don't subscribe to conspiracy theories for, you know, for the following reason. I think that two things are certain about conspiracy theories. One is that some of them are right, but two, and most importantly, that the vast majority of them are not. So instead of trying to play, you know, the uh, PI and, you know, trying to, uh, find around evidence which theory has a higher chance of being right and which not. I just, you know, don't pay attention to them that much. And, you know, do I have to do what I have to do and trade trade what I have to trade uh, without taking them into account? Uh, at least that's the way I approach it. We also have a question about Eurozy, so I might as well cover Euro Kiwi with it. So here is the Eurozy. Um, you know, after this huge reversal lower, I have to admit that the pullback has been rather orderly. Um, we're currently testing this channel trend line support, so I would be a little bit careful here, because especially if um, a risk goes off again, you should expect more upside from here. Okay, so I would be rather careful. Uh, I think we might see more upside from here. Euro Kiwi. More or less the same situation. I mean, we've gone through this channel, but I have to say that, you know, this pullback, uh, um, you know, other than that huge day that we've had has been orderly. And evidence of that is also the fact that we've had that huge outside day and every single day that has followed, although we're pulling back, is still confined within the boundaries of this long candlestick. So... I think that, you know, we're holding this 50% FIB. I think we can see higher prices from here as well. Okay. That's what I think about those. Did we cover USD Swiss? Yes, we did. You can see that the recording, I said that there is likely to be at least one more leg higher before lower. Uh, it was a Chinese block called Hu <laughs> Flung Okay. Um, let me see. Let me miss him here. 70% is tax. Okay, which country is that, Dominic? I, I, I'm, I'm assuming you're referring to uh, gas prices. So which country are you from? Uh, gold, I did cover gold. Thoughts on Bitcoin? Yeah, sure. I mean, we have one more minute. We can cover Bitcoin and Ethereum. 
Useless leverage, what's that, coach? Use <laughs> <laughs> this for the interview announcement and your cat, your cat. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, my cat is, is very stubborn. C she's, is very stubborn. She's saying, come on, Steve, I want to hear the interview. So Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, the rebound so far looks corrective in both cases to me, especially Ethereum doesn't look that good. Uh, big move lower, probably a corrective pennant that we've already broken through. Um, Bitcoin, a bear flag, most likely. Um, two more charts that actually show me that it's likely that we go back to risk off. And in that case, you should expect more weakness, both from Bitcoin and Ethereum. So um, reminding you, you have like something like 18 hours to take advantage of the offer and be with us in the chat room as well and get our analysis and our patterns in play and everything else. Would be nice having you with us. Next offer is probably gonna be uh, September. Um, so enjoy the interview, coach. All right, buddy. And Thank you. See the rest of you in the chat room. Thank you, Steve Volge. Okay, Peter, I'm getting you set up now, buddy. Hello, Peter. Welcome back, Peter. How are you, buddy? I'm good. Okay, so I don't think you've been here since we had Zoom. Uh, there's a share. No, I was. I was oh, there were? the last time. Uh, okay. Time. Yeah, it's much better than, but I still don't know how to use Zoom properly. All right, well, there's a drop down menu yeah. where you just hover your mouse and you'll see a green box that says share. Okay, so I'm just going to share a screen. Right. Peter, are you of Greek origins? Am I what? Campbell. No, actually, ah. that's not really my name. My, uh, I'm half Italian. Uh, ah, okay, and, sorry. No, uh, I was looking at another Peter in, in the uh, chat box, which has a Greek last name. Yeah, yeah. Campbell is definitely not Greek. Okay. You know, what they call, the you know what they call someone who's half Jewish and half Italian, Peter? No, I don't. Juap, juap. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never not... heard that one, huh? Oh, anyway, no, that's I the music. I, I probably not allowed to tell that joke. <laughs> But All I mean, right, anyway, I can do anything. This English is my English. show. I'm like the Howard Stern of FX, okay? So anyway, <laughs> yeah, the, buddy, the other, go ahead. The other part of me is uh, English and French, so. Okay. All right, go. well, you know, I before we get started, Peter, I want to acknowledge uh, the last time we were on, uh, there, were, there was a lot of uh, negativity and your euphoria tool that you used was calling for much higher prices and a blow off type of move in the S&Ps and that's exactly what happened. Nice call. Yeah, well, um, how now, the, bro? The funny how? thing is, is actually I have a I have a discussion which I would like to have here with uh, uh, with you guys all about emotion. I had a talk with a good friend of mine yesterday. Um, come on, load this damn image. It's uh, I'm sorry, this should be loading a high resolution image. I actually, I'm just gonna go to the Twitter feed. Uh, okay. I think it's here and uh, We were so able, I was able to better. see it. Okay. Yeah, but, but that's All right. clear. Um, All right. Basically, um, I use a totally different process for analyzing markets than most people. Um, and, um, Basically, I want to discuss this a little bit because I think it's really, really important to understand that markets operate like relationships. And I had a discussion with uh, a good friend of mine yesterday um, about this and gave him the blow by blow process of how markets change their mind and how they change their mind when it's sustainable and how they change their mind when it's not sustainable. And we're in one of those situations right now. And, and the top was also one in which we were in one of those situations in which I um, should have been uh, fully shorted at 39 or 38, uh, 30, 33, 33, 38. 80. Okay. Yeah, 33, 38. No, I, I didn't really actually want to be completely shorted at, at around 80. 
because um, uh, you know there's there still seemed to me that there was and if the market had not received exogenous news it would have been um, uh, you know we would have gone higher and finished the well I mean uh, 33 uh, 33 33. Um, is close enough for government work. I'm sure a lot yeah. of people wish they would have seen it there. Yeah, well, that's a discussion I'm going to have with you guys now. Okay. And because it implies with this, the same conditions are pretty slow. And I really want to sort of get into it. Um, right now, we have um, a chart of the Globex Sentiment Index uh, that I posted earlier today. Um, a little bullish uh, excess energy here at this low, which may very well uh, since other charts have completed um, uh, some emotional activity, may be a decent bounce to 26.20 or 26.10, um, and then form a right shoulder with a slanted neckline. And those happen a lot in bear markets, and they're very nasty when they do. I don't like the normal head and shoulders patterns, but when you get a good slanted neckline, uh, they they turn into they can turn into something. So I always prefer to be aware of them than unaware of them. But back to the most important subject here, which is markets being like relationships. Um, I would like everybody to consider something, uh, which is that essentially, uh, when you have had a fundamental difference with somebody, and especially somebody you care about and you're interested in, and whose opinions matter to you. So you, ha you now have like some of the family member or wife or husband or whatever it is, girlfriend, boyfriend. And let's say, let's just give the example that I discussed with my friend yesterday, which was, let's say that you have children and one person thinks homeschooling, the other person doesn't think homeschooling. What ends up happening is, is that you have a nasty argument about this because the one person is very motivated about it and the other person thinks it's absolutely the worst thing ever. Um, and that argument turns into festering other kind of stresses that might be in the relationship. So the argument becomes... You mean like resentment? What? It turns into resentment. It turns into, yeah, resentment. It turns into a large conflict. So I use this concept called an X-tick. An X-tick is very similar to one of these arguments. So I would like you to imagine in your life... when I don't have, ever, to, uh, I don't have to imagine it. Okay, Do you? Well, that's good. Most but people when, have experienced it. Yeah, and so whenever right. you have one of these very <laughs> big fundamental differences with somebody you care about, or yeah. you need to care about, or you want to care about, <clears throat> resolving those differences doesn't happen in a single argument. There, let me give you an example. Um, so somebody's wife doesn't think that thinks that kids should should be homeschooled, and the her spouse doesn't think so, and they have some stresses in their relationship for other reasons, probably. They have this big argument. Now, what's the chances that that can be resolved in 15 minutes or a day even where the husband comes back and says, oh, honey, you're completely right. I, uh, I'm just, uh, let's go on vacation. I, I'm really sorry about arguing. That would mean that his view would have to have totally changed without any real consideration for the fact that he held his view strongly before that homeschooling was not the right place for his children. So the way that he's going to change his mind or the way that she's going to change her mind is by having another couple arguments. And so the emotions of flipping your changing your mind and finally saying, yes, I'm sorry, I was wrong. I agree with you. Um, takes a few emotionally charged arguments usually uh, to get things straightened out. It's hard to change your mind about beliefs you hold strongly. Um, and so the markets are very similar. Uh, when you get an X tick in my world, that is an argument. It's an argument between buyers and sellers who hold their beliefs very strongly. And a single X tick that holds prices contains prices is a very uh, powerful event and suggests something about one person or another. I'm sorry, there's a little noise in the background because I'm on the balcony. I'm sorry. Um, uh, but the, um, you know, if you have a um, X-tick, a buyer X-tick, where 
it holds prices back and then sends, sends prices back down, then we have a clear winner to that argument. But what I'm interested in is when people's minds are changing. If the overall trend is down, then I'm interested in what happens at buy emotions that are charged in the buy direction. And so can we break out over those? And when you break out over a, buy, a buyer X tick, it's as if somebody started to recognize that they hold strong beliefs, but they might be wrong. Um, and so then you have a second buyer X tick, and they, and then at, at a certain price, and then they, they, they say that breaks out. Now, the market as a consensus, if you look at it as a relationship, if you look at it as a person, um, has the same reaction. Now it breaks out and you're starting to say, maybe I should think about this a little more seriously. After three or four of those kinds of confrontations, the market can sustainably change its mind. Now, why is this important in the, in the market presently? The reason it's important in the market presently is that off these lows to the tune of what is now about four, um, let's see, what is it, 300, 400, X, 400 uh, points on the S&P, basically. Um, we are dealing with a single X ticket, 2347, that broke out. And since then, all of the emotions that I look at are very contained. So they are not um, emotions that are symbolic of an argument. They're emotions of people trying to avoid making a decision not confronting a decision, not being forced to face it. So what we need in order to make a bottom in a market is we need to get three or four X ticks that break out. And then you see that the people can sustainably change their mind and they're willing to have commitment and conviction about that. Um, now this happened at the highs. And uh, so we had, uh, um, I remember it vividly because I count them. Uh, I have this rule that you have to have three X ticks at a at three X ticks regime changes in the market. Three X ticks that break down, three X ticks that break out. Why three? Very, um, because if you because you, you you just look at the relationship you have with somebody you care about, it's that exact same thing. You don't resolve your differences in a single uh, confrontation about them. Yeah, but why not need, four? Why not two? Why three? Well, two is two is not enough. Uh, three yeah. is generally enough, but in a very, very, very strong emotion situation, generally need more. So okay. in a situation like this market, you might need four. Um, okay. But, you know, the way that works is that. Well, you know, I think those, three is a number of completion. That's why I was asking. Yeah. You. Yeah. Okay. And three is my my company name. My, my intellectual property company is called M3 for a reason, because three is the most important number there is. Um, and uh, it was for me in music as well. Uh, as a composer, three was a constant relationship around. Sexually, um, it was for me. <laughs> <laughs> we are, we are, we are uh, go ahead, there. buddy. Sorry. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. But, go ahead. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so the point is right now we have uh, at the highs, we had a um, seller X ticket at six, uh, 20. At 3365, 3339, yeah. another one at 3339, and one at 3330. Um, I had made made the mistake on my piece of paper of writing down those three price prices, X tick prices, and there were two that occurred at 39, so I didn't really count them as two, uh, as two distinct emotional arguments. Um, and uh, the pivotal price for me was underneath 3330, at which point the regime in the market would change. And then to recall what yeah. was happening is that 3330 should have been defended and that could have become a decent rally, um, which would have retested the highs either as a higher low or a higher high. But um, once 3330 was broken down, yeah, then that someone had, that yeah, someone had capitulated and the argument was over. The argument was over. And the regime uh, would have changed. I'm being quiet here. Uh, and basically, so what ended up happening there is that we ended up with a 120 point gap down underneath 3330. And there the regime changed. And usually a regime change is pretty, you, you get 
tradable bounces in it. And this was one of the first ones where you didn't. Um, and I have, I suspect that when we get regime change off of a sustainable low, that it'll be similar. So um, I'm gonna show you a chart in which I discussed that, and that's gonna be on this next um, slide here. Uh, let's see, where is it? Here. So I did a ball throw gravity and bounce energy dissipation within a broadening pattern example, using a real world kind of physics approach to things. So I created uh, this, this um, chart showing a chart which I have been posting for a very long time. If anybody knows me, you know that I have been posting since uh, the spring of last year and probably before that, uh, that it was my impression that we would see uh, a throwover um, of the broadening pattern. Um, Sorry about the messages there. Which is what so, happened, uh, which is what happened up there. You know, you call yeah, it broadening. And, Some people yeah. call it a megaphone. Yeah, a megaphone. Yeah. Um, so my impression was that we would see a throwover <clears> that would be to 3,300, maybe to 3,500, 3,550, and then uh, that would roll down. Now, what ended up happening is that this whole thing right translated very, very, very far. Um, and I actually thought it was impossible to complete that accelerated downtrend line in that time frame, but I don't, this is, the pa patterns are so strong. The only thing that was happening in this pattern, if you look at my charts that I posted was that we were missing, and I don't know if you can, no, I can't click, I don't. We were missing a wave in our real live market scenario. And that was that from one to two in our live uh, market scenario, we didn't have a zigzag. So we were missing that wave, and that wave then became the throwover, which is why I thought that was going to happen. And then it still means that down here at wave 15 and 16, we should complete them at about the same time as what they would normally be in an ideal, ideal pattern. Um, so what I think is a very likely scenario is that we get down, finish this pattern, and then all of the emotions in the market get tested very, very strongly. Uh, all of this liquidity and fake money being created, all of these stimulus programs by the government basically bribing businesses with um, yeah. forgivable yeah. loans and all sorts of other tax incentives, et cetera. Um, and the checks that are sent to people will ultimately be spent in the economy, whether they are up to doing anything productive or not i don't know what i do think is that it's not that we will see inflation from this because the central banks always overdo it and if anybody thinks that this whole virus situation in my opinion is the driver for the this problem i i really think that the the that if you look back at how capitalism is supposed to work capitalism is about capital so what you're supposed to have um is capital um what we have is called creditism. And so it's not Keyword. capital, it's credit. And in the old days, many times there were wars that went on for 20 years or five years or whatever. And companies had to survive these things. So what did they do? They saved money. They couldn't go and get bailed get, out money from somewhere. Yeah. And, um, and there's companies all over Europe that are 500 years old that survived many wars. Um, and uh, my point is, is that we are what, what's happening is, is that we, we, we have an economic situation that's being created by a uh, credit dysfunction in, in a way that is magnifying this whole process. And that's sort of when you look at these broadening patterns, I want to remind you that this is a deleveraging pattern. So it is a pattern that exists when there's too much leverage and it's a way of getting rid of that leverage. And these are not accidental patterns, in my opinion. Um, this, is, um, this chart is a chart of the historical extics that have occurred throughout history. Now, if the market had not moved basically 1,200 points in the matter of a few weeks, this chart wouldn't look cluttered at all. Um, and in fact, 
what you can see is if we zoom in here, the market goes between these X tick levels, these emotional prices very directly. Um, like for example, if you look at this light uh, uh, here, I'm in the lower right hand corner. If you look at this uh, line at the bottom where the market bounced, yeah. that line has been there for years. So this is an emotional outburst. Lost you. Is it me? Is it me, guys, or you? you? It's not me. You can hear me, right, Sinatra? Ryan? Peter is gone. OK, what a great presentation. OK. Let's see if he has anything on Twitter. She sent me a message. I'm back. Oh, good. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> where'd you, <laughs> bathroom break? Oh no, it's all right. Yeah, so I am sharing screen. Okay. Be, uh, back. I was just lamenting. So Peter, you talked about it should happen at the same time. You have, uh, so you must have a feel for, you know, the, you talked about it being an argument and you know, the way we gapped lower, uh, looks like yeah. it was a divorce. Okay, so that argument ended yeah. up in divorce, you know, arguments and you can reconcile, da 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 da. But that a gap to me said it was, you know, a pretty big argument. It was, yeah, know, it, it the, was a very big argument, maybe the last one. So you and then you were talking about it should happen around in the same time, uh, around the same time. You have a kind of a feel for price and time. Do you have like, yeah, a Lu time Lucas zone? Lucas timing is a very important part of my work. I don't, okay. you know, I tend to do things in zones. So for example, I like to look at the markets and say, okay, where do I need to be extra alert? Where do I need to be extra concerned and um, aware of things that might, that I might ordinarily not focus on? So, you know, one of the problems that happens in uh, bull markets and bear markets is that people are very focused in the direction that the market has been going on and extrapolate that forward. Right. Um, I'm going to go to the Lucas timing chart in a second, but this essentially uh, complies with the Lucas timing uh, process here. I wrote that I, I created this chart with that respect to that. Um, so um, basically, you know, we're looking for a high, essentially it was around the 27th or uh, Monday acceptable um, approximately, and then down into the next week into uh, into April. Um, and what I see is, you know, if you if you were following my post at mcmct.com, mcmct on Twitter, or um, on mcmct underscore markets, which is the new feed, then you'll know that when we came down here, um, I have been harping on this particular top of this emotional zone as a high probability that we would find support there. Now, I wasn't sure whether that support would end up being in the form of a 200 to 300 point bounce and then roll over, or whether it would be a higher one to support the, to test the previous resistance levels. But this is where this is a helpful process because you know that there's a lot of committed emotion in these areas. And you know, if you have an argument with somebody um, and you walk by the place you had that argument and it was a heated argument, you, you remember it. That place is changed. So it's the same in the market. When you have heated arguments in places for market participants, those places change and they change for a very long time. And that's why I have this chart. Um, okay. uh, and let's see, uh, just to cover the other side of the argument, I would expect one way or the other that if we get down to our target range, uh, which this cut off the prices on the right, I don't know why, uh, this would be around 1850 to 1950, then we, we don't have to have a trampoline effect. Um, the problem with our situation in the markets right now is that, um, it's not certain that all this credit creation is actually gonna do anything. Um, is it going to be effective? Is it gonna go in the right places? And is there gonna be so much inflation created that effectively it's not really stimulating anything? And in fact, we end up with stagflation. 
Um, so depending on the strength of that stagflation is going to be potentially the psychology behind this bounce. And so we might see a bounce that follows the normal gravity uh, without the trampoline. So if you look at this chart over here, what you see is that I have a trampoline. Trampoline is basically all of this insanity being created by the governments and central banks around the world, by mind you, at a very delayed pace, because um, this well, it takes time. I mean, there's always a lag in monetary policy. Uh, I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. people were talking about the market being vulnerable and the repo market having problems because the effects of QT from the year before had not worn out, uh, worn off yet. Yes, exactly. And okay, so, so, so go here, ahead, buddy. So this scenario would would presume that all these monetary machinations are not very effective um, in terms of that there's other things that happen that sort of counter them. Um, and that would create a more gravity oriented reaction to this next bounce, which would probably be up around the 3000 area when it does happen. That would be a blistering rally if you consider that we end up probably in the 1900s to 2000 area. Right. Um, uh, but anyway, let's talk about Lucas timing. Uh, I'm going to go find that uh, chart. Um, this is um, going to take me a little bit here. Uh, let's see, actually, I'm going to search for it. Um, what do you call those points again, Peter? Uh, you call them X points? Uh, what do they call them? X ticks. X ticks. Okay. Got it. Hmm, that's weird. It doesn't uh, search in my private channel. <laughs> okay, but here it is. Anyway, this is another interesting point. Uh, Lucas timing to me is extremely powerful because it's subjective. And it doesn't mean that the market can't accelerate out of Lucas timing. But the point about that is that if you look down the bottom here, we have these little yellow dots. Those are the Lucas timing. And then we have subordinate yellow dots, which are a more minute Lucas timing. And then we have the, these vertical lines, which indicate where there is um, a predisposition for the market to do something um, in terms of time. Um, now, on this chart, I noted that this is a wall up here at around 2714 um, in terms of geometric resistance. Um, the emotional resistance is slightly higher than that. It's a 2750 starts. Um, and basically what you uh, see here, interestingly, is that we had Lucas timing for a low over here. And what I discovered in my work, because I, there's two patterns that I watch, bearish and bullish running corrections. Those are that I'm completely, you just don't want to screw those up. And if you're wrong, it's manageable. If it's something turns out not to be a bullish running correction or not to be a bearish running correction, it's still completely manageable. But if you decide to go long on a bearish running correction, it's a disaster. And that happened here uh, in these markets. So we ended up with um, a situation where the uh, market generated a very large bearish running correction around the 3150 area. 30, so that started it, that began the running correction. It was confirmed at 3050. So, um, and I posted all those things and, and, and sadly posted that it was, that at the best likelihood it was going to turn into a 2800 test, but running corrections are often, uh, essentially this running correction is about 170 points in size, 160 points in size. So it's very often that they achieve 300% of the measurement of the running correction. The other pattern that I watch very closely is the um, expanded flat, because I don't like Elliott Wave, and I'm not, I don't say that I disrespect the Elliott Wave people. There are some people who do it very well. I have respect for a few of them. Puff Dragon is one of them. Uh, there's also a couple others. Um, uh, who are who are, are great? Uh, Jason Haver is another one who's great, and you can look him up. He does great work. But expanded flats are the death of Elliott Wavers, and they also tend to kill 
like running corrections, they tend to kill indicators. So indicators get the wrong readings around expanded flats. And let me explain what this means. Ugh, I gotta go turn this off. I'm sorry. Um, Where is this? It's driving me nuts. What, people trying to get a hold of you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, there. Basically, Perhaps they want to have an argument. Yeah, they do. Right, uh, go ahead. <laughs> you're perceptive. <laughs> uh, no, it's actually, it's actually developers working on All something right. and they're messaging like crazy. So, it's not going to. Yeah. Gonna be going on crazy, so going on uh, for a while. Uh, basically, um, the uh, the 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 problem with expanded what I what, well, what I found is that our five waves down and just well the, okay. There's two things. C waves are much more powerful. Have the potential to be much more powerful than impulses in a uh, you know three wave. So if you, I'm not a big Elliott wave person but I'm just telling you my experiences and my experiences are a little bit unorthodox because I tend to think that the market moves mostly in threes, moves mostly as three waves and it moves mostly in ABCs that where the fifth, the, 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 the C wave is composed of five waves. Um, and uh, this is the basic structure that I look for all over the place. Okay. So if you count the market move down from the highs, what you see is that we have achieved five waves into this Lucas timing right here for what is looking like to me a C wave down that we are putting in, which is probably going to take us to the 1850 area. Okay. Um, uh, so, so on this first leg of, of this wave we have uh five uh waves down and mm -hmm. um the a wave in, a, in in an expanded flat acts like people expect it does what happens is is that the b wave doesn't the b wave should have been right here like at this red line and given mm -hmm. people a higher low and then given people this c up here where people could balance out their positions what screws people up is when the B wave actually drops below the low of A. In a regular. And, yeah, and then it's an irregular flat. Yeah. Um, and that's what I think we have now. And that's, that's why, why people I, are stocking up on toilet paper because of all the irregular formations here. <laughs> you know, exactly. Peter, uh, I think I've done a pretty good stand up routine, and you amazed me again today with this presentation. Really, uh, your yeah. work is you're like a mad scientist. My trading. Yeah, I don't know about that, but <laughs> no, really, and uh, and you know, I have mentees that follow your stuff, so um, I, I've seen it. You're good. You know, How can people follow you? Uh, is it strictly on Twitter, or do you have anything else going on? Well, uh, let me just finish this because we're almost oh, okay. done with this, and then we'll All always right. skip to that. Basically, okay. um, this is the Lucas timing coming up right around April seventh, plus or minus a day. Write um, it down. The normal um, period, the normal activity for that could be a retest of the lows. It could be, in fact, that the market could extend higher. In, in, we could have acceleration from this timing right now. That it's the twenty seventh to 29th, which is where, which you can see at the bottom of your screen. That yeah. could turn into a point that's acceleration. I don't think that's happening, um, and uh, I do think that we should see a low somewhere between twenty one fifty and nineteen fifty into the next timing. Okay. Or and some, when some is it? When's Easter? It. When's yeah. Easter, Peter? Uh, around my birthday. So <laughs> what, what is it April what what's the number on it I'm not sure I think it's close to the 12th though okay so the market's going to have a resurrection around Easter so uh, yeah might. okay what a great um, interview I, buddy um so anyway if people want to um follow uh you the, uh, follow uh, us so. uh because it's a team here I wrote all the stuff uh, code here but we have a team uh, MCM market stream is private and you have to actually subscribe to get that. And if you're not a member, then you'll see the subscription options on the page. Um, then, uh, MCMCT is, uh, let me just get back there. 
MCMCT is the um, public Handle. stream. Now, yeah. I used to post completely on there for years all of the same stuff that I'm posting on MCMCT markets. The problem is it's distracting to deal with a bunch of idiots publicly, and it's a lot of work to do it. So um, the, the the data that um, we that uh, I, I'm make uh, i believe is unique and very valuable i'll show you just what we did uh, the lot you know i'd like to know while you're wrapping up uh what's your view on this pandemic uh how long you think it's going to go um uh do you think this body blow to the economy is um kind of fatal so i'm, I'm wondering what your thoughts are well i i i don't if you want my 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 opinion on what I think is going to yeah. happen, I think I think we're going to get the trampoline effect here. That's my bias. I think we're going to go down into the eighteen fifty to nineteen fifty area and get the trampoline effect. Because we'll be look, getting better news because the curve is flattening out. I mean, no, they are going to be related, aren't they? Because the dream of Marxists everywhere, which central bankers are Marxists. Okay, um, here we go. All right. Uh, they uh, they're not anything to do with capitalism. Their whole goal right. is to undermine capitalism, to right. create con crony capitalism that sustains this sort of ideal of. Uh, I'm going to show you this. Uh, this is my my go to post, uh, which you guys should uh, bookmark. Um, read that while I'm talking here. So this is what central bankers do. Um, okay. So one of the things that they are going to do to make sure that all the assets are on the bank balance sheets that people lose and that they get people chasing wildly, as in the bottom of this, a process of wealth getting degenerating into a gamble and a lottery, in my opinion, means that we probably get the trampoline effect to get to a new high. Um, but then the results of that are likely to be terrible. Although I think it's possible that they might be able to save the system. These guys are unbelievable in their persistence. You think um, they want to save the system? Or start a new one? As long as they are increasing their power, yeah. And central okay. bankers, in my opinion, are, um, you know, that the, the, they're, they have a particular goal. And their goal is to consolidate Control. the power of the banking system. Right. And to move power from the private capital into credit and banking. Um, and well, that, they're that, mission accomplished. Yeah, and so um, yeah. so I think that, that, that if you ask me my opinion, I think that the way they probably end up doing this is by just hitting that command P button as, as much as they can possibly hit um, uh, to generate um, perception that furthers their longer term agenda, which is not capitalism. Um, and so I'm emphatic about this. I post this all the time because central banking is about taking the power away from the people. If people wanted people to be powerful, they would give them capital. And capital stores your life energies. Capital stores the investments of all your learning. But the, the, the whole goal of our financial system, the world over, and especially emanating from China, which is the de facto mechanism to implement the most extreme monetary policy ever um, and express that in the world. And believe it or not, it's not being done by China directly. It's being done by other central banks who have given China the collateral to do it. Um, so the PBOC really directly reports the United States dollar. And you can say whatever you want, but that's how this works. And um, so all this crazy monetary policy in China and Japan uh, are under the direct supervision of the Federal Reserve and the World Bank and the Bank of International Settlements. Yeah. None of these things are happening by accident. Right. So, and they're all designed to undermine capital. Confiscate. So that means, yeah, confiscate and to yeah. remove your ability to have a happy life without stress. Uh, everybody okay. will have mission stress. accomplished again. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, you know, yeah. So, yeah, so, I, you, go ahead. So, anyway, um, you can uh, follow me at uh, MCM Markets, and you can follow me at 
uh, mcm underscore ct and then the website is mcm-ct.com um on a, on a on a discussion of timing i'm going to just go bring go back to this chart um this is the idealized pattern okay now i don't know um if we will continue to track this pattern but i have to tell you since we i have not changed a line on this chart i can go show you the posts i did last year which I all suggested you. that the um that a throwover would complete somewhere in december to february this year and then when we started to get into february it looked like they were even right translating it further but the end of this pattern comes in around may so what it looks like to me is we probably get through the worst of this probably into april or may okay sometime all right and maybe early june so but i'd say may if you ask me to put a number on it i'd say middle of may Thank you so much, my trading more, your brother. Great yeah, presentation. It's great to catch up with you. Okay. Yeah, really. And uh, so uh, there's Peter. Uh, I'm telling you, you know, I, I want to bring the best people in, and here's an example of it. So, Peter. Well, Doug, uh, you're pretty, uh, you're a, a, a great person. I really appreciate knowing you and having you being part of the, the our project as well. Um, I think you, you use Tick Tool, so you know what it does. So. Yeah, yeah. And uh, thank you for your contribution and uh, for all the help you give people, Peter. And I, and really, um, my hope is that uh, you and your the people you care about, instead of having arguments, remain untouched by this virus. And uh, you and I are brothers, so uh, we can argue and still be brothers. We can argue exactly. about the market and still be brothers, man. 100%. And I, I want to just comment to people who are doing well in the stock markets. Please uh, consider the people who aren't doing so well right now and are probably having difficulty getting signed up for all the stuff that they need to help them. You know, if you can give them bigger tips or help people um, who are suffering uh, right now, I think just the thought means more than than yeah. the reality of whatever you do so okay buddy okay that, uh, you, that's a good seed to sow for everyone we all reap what we sow so that, exactly. that's that's a wrap everyone so uh okay. don't just count your pips and uh your emotional x ticks count your blessings and i'll see everyone tomorrow adios Great. thank you peter thank you